I want to continue our discussion of independence from last time to indicate how knowing that events are independent can actually be a very useful thing and can help us. Now, previously we saw some examples of two events that were independent and examples of events that were not independent. In other words, the test for independence was uh, between E and F was whether or not knowing E had any effect upon whether or not uh, what the probability of F was. If, the, if uh, knowing E did not change the likelihood of F, then they two were independent. Now, previously we had seen the definition of conditional probability, or one way to write it here, as the quotient of the joint probabilities divided by the probability that E would happen, that would give the conditional probability. Now, notice that if we assume that E and F are independent, then we can rewrite this equation. Namely, we can multiply the cross-multiply the extremes here and we get that the joint probability, the probability of E and F both occurring, I use intersection there for and, is just going to be the uh, probability of E times the probability of F. Now, this is actually a uh, very uh, useful uh, relationship and uh, I think we've actually maybe seen it one time before. Uh, so here's one kind of example. Uh, suppose we have uh, for quality control. Supposing we have uh, a product that's made up of lots of different parts. Well, we'll assume for simplicity that there's uh, only two parts here. Say part A and then part B. Uh, I don't know, these are two parts that that makes something work. Uh, and what we know is we know things about how reliable A and B are. Supposing we are assuming that uh, the probability that A works, that A is OK, is going to be 90%. In other words, there's a 10% chance of failure. And supposing part B over here, we know that the probability that it is going to work uh, I'm going to take some simple number here, uh, let's say 80%, percent point eight. So it's got a 20% failure rate. And what we're interested in is what's the probability that the whole system works, or complementary, what's the uh, likelihood, what's the failure rate of the whole system build up of these two parts? Okay, so how do we figure out the probability that the whole system works. Well, our system is a simple a system here, a build up of two parts. So that just means that if, because then these are lined up in series here, and so if one fails, then the whole system fails. So if the whole system is going to work, we have to have A is going to have to be OK, uh, and uh, part B is also going to have to be OK. Well, notice this is, is an AND here. So this is just the joint probability of two things. So this will be just the probability of A times the probability of B uh, working. I should have said that. Uh, if we are assuming that the two parts are independent. So that's the advantage of having independent parts. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to figure out the probability that they both work. But if you assume they're independent, it's a piece of cake. OK, so what's the probability that A is going to be OK? That's going to be 90% uh, of the time. What's the probability that B is OK? Well, that's 80% of the time. So 9 times 8, well, that's so. The whole system will work 72% of the time, or which means there's a 28% failure rate for the whole system. Okay, so that's one example. Now, of course, we can 
tack on if we thing was made up of a hundred parts and you knew they were each working independently we could calculate the reliability of the whole system uh, using this type of idea now let's look at another example um, where we make the assumption of independence and so in this example let's assume that we have a uh, sort of a, a basketball player who's going to uh, shoot uh, try to shoot a free throw or something like that and supposing the player has a 75% uh, free throw average okay so and he gets fouled in some situations so he gets three shots Okay, so what's the probability that he's going to make three in a row without a miss? Okay, well, if we make the assumption that each attempt is independent, assume independence, okay, then this is just going to be the probability he makes the first and he makes the second. Probability of first and second and third okay and so by our assumption of independence this probability can be computed by the product of the probability and of course we assuming he's a 75 percent free throw shooter so this is just going to be the probability that he, he scores on the first times the probability he scores on the second times probability he scores on the third uh, which is just going to be 75 percent times itself several times so it's 0.75 cubed uh, let's see that is a little challenging there that's uh, three-fourths uh, cubed which is 27 64ths okay it works out to about uh, 42 percent or something like that so uh, basically the, the 75 percent free throw shooter if we assume that each shot is independent, he's got a 42% chance of making three in a row. Okay, so this is an illustration of, of, of one nice applications of uh, knowing that events are independent.